Using the associated script file, we have set up a substrate with a single spherical particle with a diameter of 155 nanometers. This particle will represent a defect on the structure, and will calculate the scattered field profile in the far field due to this defect. A mesh override region has been placed around the scattering particle, and a power monitor has been added above the structure to collect the reflected scattered fields from the particle. This monitor should be located in the scattered field region after the source is added. Add the total field scattered field source from the sources drop down menu. Edit the source using the edit button in the side toolbar or the E keyboard shortcut. In the general tab, set the injection axis to Z axis and the direction to backward to inject the source from above the structure towards the negative Z direction. In the geometry tab, set the X, Y, and Z spans of the source to 0.3 microns. This sets the size of the total field region of the source. Make sure that the X and Y position of the source is centered at 0, and set the Z position to 0.1 micron. In the frequency wavelength tab, set the wavelength of the source to 0.63 micron, and click OK to accept the settings. Before running the simulation, check to make sure that the boundaries of the source do not intersect with the monitor or the scattering particle, and the edges of the source are passing through the substrate. Now click Run. After the simulation is complete, I can right-click and visualize the far field result from the monitor to see the angular distribution of the scattered fields. Next we'll go over some setup tips for the total field scatter field source. As we saw in the demonstration, a mesh override region was used and it covered the full volume of the total field region of the source. Using a uniform mesh set size in the directions normal to the injection axis over the source volume ensures that the subtraction operation at the source boundaries is as accurate as possible. This can be particularly important when injecting the source at a non-normal incident angle. You can test the setup by temporarily disabling the particle or defect, and run the simulation to determine the noise floor in the scattered field region. Ideally, if there is no noise, the magnitude of the electric field in the scattered field region should be zero. The total field scattered field source should never be extended through the PML or metal boundary conditions, but they can be extended through periodic or block boundaries if simulating periodic structures. If there is a substrate, the injection axis of the source should be normal to the substrate. The size of the source are used to determine what fields get subtracted at the boundaries, so they should pass through the substrate but not interfere with the scattering structures. It's also possible to obtain the scattered fields without using the total field scattered field source by running two separate simulations, one without the scattering feature to get the reference fields, and one with the scattering feature. The scattered fields can be calculated by subtracting the reference fields from the fields in the case with the scattering feature. This method is useful if you want to get the scattered fields due to a source with a different field profile instead of a plane wave.